Hi again guys, uh, this is just a, a follow up video from the one that we did of putting a diesel heater in a garage. Um, I'd love to report to you that it was an absolute success. Um, I, I've got some videos that I've taken some clips and I'm going to show you them basically just fabricating a, a bit of a framework for the unit. I didn't want the unit, it's sitting on a MDF and I know some people cut the hole through the wooden shelf where the fit them and let the unit exhaust etc go through that and bolt it with the four bolts but it came with a, a substantial steel plate that I showed you so I made a, a I've, I had some two inch thin wall aluminium angle um, I don't know what bit that's left is I'll put it in the drawer uh, but it was about a three foot six long piece I had, a metre piece. And um, I'd been kicking around in Gallagher forever, moving it around. I thought, well, that'd be ideal. It's not heavy, so it was, it was an ideal thing to make a platform from. And I knocked a bit of steel around on here and used axaw and drilling machine. I just showed you a little bit. Um, and then a, a bit running. Um, at the end, uh, I'd said in the video that... I was going to get two thermometers and mount one at low level and one at high level, which I'm still going to do for reference. But I'd forgot, I've got that infrared thing, haven't I? The cheap Aldi, Lidl or whatever, um, infrared gun. And by what a difference. I'd said you, you can get eight or nine degrees difference between uh, ground level and your ceiling. And I wasn't wrong. Uh, you have a look on figures, you'll see, but it was something like... 7.4 or 7.5 degrees on the concrete floor, which it would be clap cold. Uh, but just up from that, it were only eight, eight point something on, on the woodwork. Uh, but up at the ceiling, it were like 18 point odd, you know. It, hell of a difference. So that return air is definitely going to come in handy because it were warm up there and it were cold, sort of mid, mid here, were probably only 15 degrees. So if I can pull that air, back into the heater and recycle it, it's like putting recirc on in your car, isn't it? Instead of having freezing cold air coming in. Because it is quite cold in my garage next door. It's only a steel roller door um, and it's not insulating in the roller door. And a lot of cold does come through it and I get quite a bit of condensation on the back of that door. Dehumidifier's in there now and it, it, I just leave it running on a, on a something like 70%. It's not, it's not on high. Um, but ju it just pulls moisture out. So, without further ado, um, thanks for watching um, first part and many comments that I got that were great. Um, and I just hope that it inspires anybody who fancies doing one. There's, YouTube is just full of them, people doing them. And I didn't want to show me actually installing the complete thing because it's been done to death. Um, it was more of, do you think it would work in here? It's, it's only four meters by something like three meters and 2.5 meters high. And yeah, it is an insulated fridge panel building, four inch thick, as I've said many, many times before. But you've got to remember, when it is cold, really cold, it's always <clears throat> probably four degrees higher in here. <clears throat> say, I've, say I've been in for two days and outside, well, other day it was minus five out there. And in here, it was plus four. So that is a fair degree of difference. But generally, it's about five degrees difference between outside and in here. If I haven't been in for quite a few days. So, yeah. I haven't found out yet whether you can set that as like um, a dew point. You know, like five to eight degrees. Well, you can set it to eight minimum and 35 on maximum but I don't think you can make it come on if it drops below a certain temperature I don't think it's got that facility to do that which would be great wouldn't it because it, it'd be like uh, if it were freezing cold in here dead of winter you know we got to minus eight or nine outside and it were nearly zero in here it, it could bang some heat on and uh, stop condensation but get out of everything I'm just hoping this is going to save me a lot of money because as, as you've heard me say before, 
uh, used a lot of money in electric. It was just ridiculous, and you are that. Obviously, you're all going the same. It's costing you a fortune for electric. You see, you can get even a gas bottle with with a, a, a flame eater on or one of those three standing ones. They're all right. The trouble is with them, is you've got them in here and you've got the gas burning in it. Causes awful condensation. Them gas eaters, tons of condensation from gas. Uh, plus, it's probably not too good for you either to keep opening it down, letting a bit of fresh air in. But a bottle of gas, I think they've gone up by about three times. Somebody was saying the other day, I'm sure they paid 40 odd or nearly £50 pound for a, gal a bottle of gas for the caravan. Like, what? I think I used to pay £16 pound for a um, 15kg, the tallish one. I've got a small one down there, a propane, and I've got a propane eater. But I did use it originally when I first started off, but I don't use it anymore. And I say that I can take that electric one away now, and I suppose I could take that Dimplex down, but I probably won't. I'll just leave it there and run out of diesel while that thing pegs out. Okay, I hope you enjoy this little bit of film anyway. It's not massively long, uh, but yeah, and, and give us comments. Tell me what you think, because uh, I'm chuffed to bits with it. I think it's fantastic, and I think everybody with a workshop should have one really do don't take a lot of installing probably two days it's taken me making me brackets and running cables and one thing and another but you know if you want to do it simply you could just buy the cassette type like john's workshop's got uh, and just plunk it in a corner as long as you've got an air inlet into the back of it there's nothing wrong with doing that and you are actually recirking your air aren't you as well you're not pulling it from the ceiling but at least you're, you're recirking air and not pulling freezing cold air in Okay guys, enjoy the film. Live, neutral, it's all right to use forks on them, but earth really, you should always use a ring crimp. And then if the screw came just a bit loose, it cannot fall off unless the screw came right out. So this is the power supply, supply to there. I'm going to get the harness uh, and connect it up. I won't show you me connecting it all because there's no really to show. I've marked up for a hole through the wall for the air pipe there. This is my fuel hose. The exhaust going out through here. Oh, well away from that. We're not doing too bad so far. Heater goes there somewhere. I'll work that out now.
exhaust out in the inlets now. I'm bend that as tight as I can. I'm gonna keep this is this is going on to MDF in there. Uh, I'm paranoid about heat. Don't want to get this thing melting or setting out on fire. I've put a piece of exhaust tube in through garage wall and I need to go up to a uh, local accessory shop and get some exhaust wrap. In fact, if I can get some matting, I'll actually lay, lay it underneath here on the MDF top and trap it down with these screws. But, I mean, I've seen people doing these and the exhaust pretty close to wood and I've seen somewhere it's smouldered it a bit, so, yeah. I'm going to try and get a that. Right guys, that's the heater on and running. And it took a while to prime through. I, I did bleed um, the right up to the pump through the filter uh, and right up to the pump. So I had to pump it through the pump and up to the unit. Uh, and it had two goes and then did it and it worked great. So. I'll show you what we've done. There's absolutely beautiful heat belt in our there. The other vent I did that I showed you that's down at ground level, there is heat coming out of it, but it's not belting out. So I need to ramp this down. I need to damp this down a little bit somehow. Maybe a, something to blank some of this off. But feeling that heat coming out of there, it is quite hot. I'll have to cut this in guys, uh, this Sony camera is a, lo it's a lovely camera with the battery, they don't last two seconds, I have three of these batteries, there's a genuine one and then two El Cheapos and in fairness the El Cheapos last just as long as the original, um, but I've always got one on charge and unfortunately it went off on me, but we're back on now. So, we'll carry on what we're saying. So that's the air inlet unit. I'll bring camera closer. So that's the completed setup. That's that 12 volt power supply. The pump is under there. You can hardly hear it that, it's very quiet. Ticking its head off pretty fast though. Well, it's trying to get to the room up to temperature. Yeah, and what I was saying, well that's the Y piece. I, I, I've run out of clips actually, so I've got to tie wrap that on. Uh, but that's going, it's, you can imagine Katie, the air just goes straight through and it's, the sun's going up there. Lovely and warm that. Oh, the ducting's lovely and warm. Might even warm part of my garage. I can but hope. We've got some bits of pipe left. And, uh...
That's the left hand vent. That one's hotter. I've put a bit of blanking on there to, just so I could get some blow through to the other one. Very hot. But in fairness, it is running flat out. It's belting away at a fair old leak. According to my temperature in here, according to my stat, is that. 18.3 which is quite comfortable now so it has been a success definitely I'll be showing it down and going in in a minute cause it's uh, it's day after boxing day kind of five at night I've no more jobs I want to be doing right at minute so we'll sign off at that well, I hope you enjoyed that, guys. It, it was just bits and bats, but you know, it was a, it was a, a cut and shut job, really. But um, basically, got an idea of what I'd done. I'm sure you've all got your own ideas how you do things, and we all do things different, and we all have different ideas, don't we? That's a good thing about this, like model engineering thing, and messing with a lathe and a milling machine. You you come up with loads of different ideas, you know. Okay guys, the next time you see us, we'll probably be on with part whatever it is, is it three or four, of the um, Hemingway's kits job. Okay, thanks guys.